endorse. Um, we just need guess, to make travel arrangements for that meeting tomorrow. Um, Greensboro Strategic Planning meeting. We have to go through the sponsored by Carl's Kansas Association. Whatever you want to do. Okay, so which time do you want to leave here? Two o'clock. Two. Uh, yeah, I can take a vehicle. I'll take the blazer. You want to take the blazer? Yeah, if you want. It's fun to ride. Should we do that? No? Yeah. I'll drive if we're going to take the blazer. <laughs> Are you just going to come by and pick me up? At, at your office? Yeah. Okay. All right. I'll make sure there. All right. I'll just be at the office. It's at the hospital. Okay. At the right. health office. Yes. All right, two o'clock. All right, that's all I needed then. Thank you. All right. Have a date. All right, so uh, I have a right away request. <coughs> Is this an offering? Graham Ryan, down here. Drilled a well about two miles to the west of here and tried more stuff in there. 
We were down there and fixed it once. We were moved to read the end. We were down there the other day because uh, they called us. <coughs> between Southeast 60th Street, between Southeast 70th and Southeast. Now, is that the same road where they trench to dry, drain the pond or whatever? No, no, that's actually a couple of miles off to the road. So there's another problem over there? Okay. And it's not a road. No. The, the, like I told you, the road up and then I just made that jump on the walls. But, but to drain the mud hole back out to the pond, so right away where the people drive, it's not right. Right. They ended up after close the road and it was, it was pretty deep and there's still water in it. But we ended up building the tension on the road and on both sides. Oh, well, when a tractor went through there, he's up to his axles. Yeah. So, it's, I think that's something that, well, she that can get involved in that. Yeah, because it's, it, that's a big risk. This uh, casing they said is five and a half steel casing. Mm -hmm. I mean, is that a plastic ramp line run inside of that, or what is that? I don't know what they would put inside. I just want to investigate. Well, I didn't know if they're using a five and a half inch casing to go under the road and run and something through the casing. Yeah, that's what is that should be. supposed to be. Yes, yeah. it just should be cased. Okay, because the line I saw laying on that road, that specific road, is uh, plastic. Yeah, no, it, anything that goes under our road should be boarded. Okay. If that's the case, I make a motion to approve this water crossing for Edison operating uh, to cross the road at uh, Edison Avenue. Yeah, Southeast 30th, Southwest 30th Avenue and Southwest 30th Street yeah. within a half mile north. I make that motion. And it's been moved and second. We adopt this. All in favor say aye. Aye. All opposed same sign. Motion carried. So you need two copies. All right. Or one. Mm -hmm. Or two. So one, one's two. Because one is the, the crossing. They need to change the format. They need to use the correct one. Yeah. I'll make sure that the company from now on they can have the they get sent back to them. That's going to be four hours for five minutes before I walk up. Okay. All right. <coughs> Anything else? On that, or you got to do or heard anything back from anybody on the, on the elevator? They haven't been down with the editor very busy, so when I get the inspector down here, we'll, we'll never get we'll that sign. So I can have the guys down to come inspect. We'll try to get them to make it come in here and get along with it. So see what we can do. How much is ballpark figure? What's what we're looking at? Okay. If it's right enough, are you going to that? Dam, oh, dam on Peace yeah. Creek. We got, we got lots of animals like that. Yeah. Especially, especially when we're in the Peace Creek area. We have a lot of water. Mm -hmm. So it's just a matter of contact with the animals. We've seen them at a place that long. But that, that's the one where we went over there and cleaned part of it out while it was up. Uh, now it's worse than all the other for you. <laughs> I haven't been over that way pretty bad. Now there's a boat for I got a picture that I should have brought on. Brought on. It, it's kind of comical. Yes, really. it is. I saw <laughs> yeah. that and I said, You drive by there and kind of scratch your head. <laughs> Somebody lost their boat in the history. Come from the 
Stafford Lake. <laughs> <laughs> There's a couple of things uh, that you guys will have to do in the future. One is this emergency management test. Uh, Nina and I took this back in 09 and just got this for the It's a I, uh, 100 and 700 is the only thing. 14 different kinds, yeah. but the only thing we're required is to do the 100 and 700. So this is the one that costs us five thousand dollars a year. Yes, and, and I'm hoping for this being our last term. If we can get out, I'll find out. Part, uh, you know, this is our for my second term in this, and I never seen anything. I mean, it's nice KDHG happy. But as far as I mean, their main itinerary is waste reduction. And as much as we recycle, I mean, I'm seeing the other way of reducing the amount of what we already know. So this is up for renewal plan? It already is. It, it already is. is. Yes. Yes, we have to so this costs us five thousand a year for no, five every, years. Every five years. Every five. Years. Every five, years. Every five years. One, one fee for every yes. five years, and they give us basically we get the, the solid waste management plan for that money. Yeah. Has there been so I don't know. I knew once we choose, if you choose not to do this, what is your plan to have that plan enacted or to, to have a plan in place? Well, I mean, we just go off of our uh, solid waste operating plan. And that which we suffices have the KDHE and all the requirements? Well, that's what I'm going to find out. Okay. okay. I knew uh, at the last meeting that I was at that there was one candidate who was going to talk, talking about dropping out. I don't remember which one it was, but one of them. The county commissioners contacted me about this. Okay. Well, it definitely benefits Ford County. For oh, sure. Yeah. And, um, and yeah, I mean, if we have a plan in place, I mean, I don't want to reinvent the wheel. Kurt has never been to one of the meetings, but uh, it is the exact same thing. Meeting after meeting, they appoint chairmen and, and uh, uh, they have a little bug over here and here. That's about it. it starts at 11 and it's over by 1. And lunch is provided. Chicken. Chicken fried. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> so, <clears throat> we're going to hold off on this, or? No, I mean, we've already taken care of We've already uh, right, paid so for so the So, this is our last year in that, is that what you said? It, if it's not required, yes, it might okay. I haven't found that out yet. To give you okay. I'll be seeing them uh, pretty soon here next month. Okay. I mean, for this, this is the last year of, of that five year plan. The last year on the five year plan. No. No, this is uh, this will be our last term, five year term. And we just started the term. Yeah. And we just started with yeah. the So you have five years to make up your mind whether you want to stay in. I mean it's it's something that was implemented when I came here. Well, it's certainly got the 
attention of other counties around us that participate in the same program. I mean, they're not happy with something either. I mean, for them to, to you know, he contacted me way early before I really knew what, what, what this plan was. Um, so I know it's sure got their attention, but... Uh, well, the scope of it is is, is planned implementation of, of reducing waste right. in the county. And, uh, I, you know, How I mean, long would it take you to research this to know if we can, if we need to do this, or if our plan that we have in place, our other plan is survived? How well, long would it take you to research that? Probably a couple days. We don't have another meeting before August 30th. I would say go ahead with it and then. We're already paid. We're already paid. Yeah. So we're already. I'm just yeah. saying for you know in, in the future I want to look into it. I mean, so we won't. If we don't okay. have to do it, I wouldn't do it again. Okay. Right. I make a motion to adopt resolution 2013-15. Second. Uh, motion to make we adopt 2013-15 uh, resolution. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed same sign. Motion carried. Uh, I think it I'll take it down. It has to be published in it. Yes. <coughs> I'll take it down. Speaking of recycling, is there some way we can put a bracket on the lids? On the cardboard to where it only opens about so far where they have to break the boxes down to get them in there. Yeah, if there's some way we can put a, a restriction to where that where that plastic lid can only be raised. You're gonna have to get longer arms. Like this much. Because I've noticed in places where you know, there's cardboard recycle and there's just a slot mm -hmm. to where the boxes have to be broken down. Sure. I went by the one the other day and there was four boxes in there. That was wrong. Well, they were they were they were broken down and the bin was full. So here you got this big opening and they just throw it. And I don't know if there would be some way to take an angle and to where they. Well, it can only open so many inches or not. Think I'll look at how to come off those <coughs> gears and come up with an angle iron and pop and be able to lock it. Yeah. It's just... You got a portion. <laughs> uh, I had turkey on out yesterday. And, uh, they knew you know what was. They tested uh, MSW more. Well, I had some low areas that settled in last year that uh, they were concerned about. I got big fields in a month ago and reseeded. Um, you guys recall a while back we had our annual uh, permit renewal and the services that we had here kind of set off annual permit renewal and closure and post closure costs. Uh, I don't know if you recall a table that, that's like a $2,000 fee. Um, I got the results on that, and I was one. Uh, I apologize for the print. I called Terry Tom and told him to make this. I was supposed to read it. I had to look at it in a magnifying glass. But I made you a copy of this, and you can you want to look through it. It is quite a costly uh, procedure uh, if and when we ever close our CND cells. Um, Overall, if you look at the back page, the final cost of that is $208,000 is what it would cost to close that four and a half acres, which is with all the three C and D cells. That's including the new one that we have it. So to properly close those C and Ds, uh, this is a breakdown of the cost. And the uh, post post closure care is the mowing, fertilizing, all that of the of the uh, vegetation cover. 
that's for 30 years, 30 year cost estimation. I just wanted to see the cost of that. And uh, which luckily, you know, I mean, all the old MSW or old trash pits, that's been in 76, uh, they are not properly closed. They're just filled in. And uh, they're basically grandfathered. We had to go back and close every one of them. Uh, they basically grandfathered that and then, you know, they don't bother with the county, but then they bankrupt every county trying to properly close all the old sites. Since 1994. Uh, to close the cell, you got to do the proper procedure. You take the inches from back to clay. It has to be back to clay and two foot of topsoil, and you have to have it built up in two point size. You have to have it vegetated. So, over in the old pits, just covered up. Yeah, they have a they have an interim cover of. Uh, since I've been there, they're they're about two feet of interim just topsoil cover. Um, the last CND cell that I was in before we dug this one, I ended up taking the entry cover off and filled it to gray and just put about a foot of dirt on. See, it's, uh, when we did this new pit, we got permitted to, if and never need be, go above gray because we're at the full capacity of this landfill and uh, uh, we can go above gray with it, which is right on top of the old three CND. But when uh, we were doing some digging out there on our very first pit here at the south end of that, uh, they was wanting to find the leading edge of that pit, and uh, Jody was out there digging, and he went down six, 26 and 8 feet before we ever got cut. And I talked to them at uh, uh, KDHE yesterday when they were out there uh, checking my clothes pits, and he said that uh, if need be, if we ever had to, he said we could take that 6 eight off that. Right on top of that. So that would save you, you know, several years of the only problem with going above grade, it's it still would be cheaper than having to buy dirt and bring it in. Uh be cheaper than having to move to a new site. Uh, which I mean we're a long ways from you see that. But you know, with the size of cell we have, one going able to fill that up. But uh, that's that's I just that's a breakdown of the cost. Uh, I just wanted you to know the the amount. It's quite a lot. Very expensive. Yeah. It costs more to close than it does to open. I think that's a pretty safe figure for 30 years. Yeah. Or that is the figure for for current. Well, currently, yeah. I mean, that's the cost of uh, fertilization, mowing that kind of acre for 30 years. Yeah. You know, I mean, for the clay, that's when we excavated that new cell, uh, stockpiled all that clay, the clay bottom. You know, we have enough clay on site to take care of about two acres of head clay. It's broke down in there. You know, I said I'm sorry about the print. Oh, it's so small. Uh, but it, um, we would have to buy the other half. Where did you get the clay that's there now? I don't know. Oh, yeah. I don't know the new cell that we did. How huge was that? Do you remember? 15 feet. 15? Not that area. There's not a lot of clay. Look at the rain and come down that dead body. <laughs> <laughs> So, okay. uh, that's all I have. Very good. Thank you. I'm looking at that cardboard. I will. Well, you know, I mean, you, three or four years ago, I looked at buying a cardboard bin mm -hmm. and started oh. cardboard. collecting that stuff there at Stafford at the mm -hmm. store. They were, I mean, they, all their cardboard bins that they make, they're made that way. It's just got a slot. Right. You know, but all I can do is that. Okay. Thanks. Thank you. Thanks. Um, is Amy here? I didn't see her out there. Can you approve the minutes? I move we approve the minutes of the August 21st meeting. I second that. It's been moved and seconded. We adopt the meeting minutes from the last meeting. All in favor saying aye. 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 All opposed, same sign. Motion carried. Yeah.
know we got to thank you, you know, for the, the use of the Stafford County Annex from the Leadership Golden Belt 2013. Just to thank you, Lou. Signed by this lady. We'll recess. And today I have a very quick agenda item. And this is a, just requesting approval to submit our fiscal year 2014 carryover reimbursement budget. Our reimbursement budget um, is the funding that we receive from our funders. And um, we also, if you remember, we had an outpatient treatment program that ended mid year, so we did have some uh, of the collections from that. Uh, we have to have a plan in order of how we plan to spend that money or else the state will find the money for our money. So um, in fiscal year 13, we had collected um, just shy of $31,000 and had a um, previous cash balance of um, $56,000. So our budget um, that we're starting out here is with uh, $87,185.44. And if you notice, uh, on the first page is just a summary of how we're breaking it down. Um, something new that I'm trying to um, protect some of those funding is uh, for possible separation fees from the program. If you have somebody that, you know, leaves the agency, it doesn't devastate the budget by paying out their sick leave and, and uh, vacation and all of that. So right now I'm building mine in, and as our staff build longevity, then I'll and include them into the mix. Um, I also, uh, we will be funding all of our drug and alcohol testing and supplies through our local funds, which we haven't done in the past. Our regular budget was um, cut about 4.8% this year, so we're trying to fill in the budget with that. Um, and we also have some funding available now for um, indigent offenders. The, you know, were ordered to get a substance abuse evaluation, for example, and they didn't have the money, then we can help fill that in. So, and just regular um, travel, training, supplies, all of that. So, so, so we don't have to expend all of that money, but we have to have a plan so it's available. So, just don't want to take it. So, um, if there's any questions, I'd be happy to answer them. Otherwise, um, I'll be back next month to talk about the year-end outcomes and get that report done and come on and talk and hopefully have good news for you. Right. You said that you lost 4.8% from the state? Or? Yes, we get our money from the state and then um, we actually submit a grant in, in May, and then that sets out our goals and objectives. And we tell them how much money we need and to operate uh, our business. And then when they uh, tell us how much money to actually give us, then um, they're, they've made a commitment that they're not going to um, decrease our budget more than 5% at a time, uh, which we found that out. Uh, so that was, I guess, good news. Um, now there's um, new funding that's available to help with offender services that I'm trying to get together and partner with other agencies um, so that the services are still there. So you need a motion to do the carryover reimbursement? the carryover reimbursement. I'll second that. It's been moved and seconded that we um, do the carryover reimbursement. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed say sign. Motion carried. Is there something we need to yes. sign? Yes. And I can take this back or you can keep up either way, it doesn't matter. Yeah. 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 Thank you. I'll be back. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> I still need the representative of Stafford County. I, I worked on your uh, rec 
director and sent him. <laughs> he has he has a lot on his plate. It sounds like so. No, that would uh, do. <clears throat> so um, I'll talk to Judge Walters. And she she's has a bit, yeah, she's, she's in the, I'll take care of that matter as well when we come back next month. Hopefully, get somebody new on board. That's the only person you can try then. Yes. Yeah. Um, you know, in a perfect world, that would, uh, it, would, it would be in the minority, and they want to have all of our uh, population to be, you know, reflected on our statute. And that's something that we're missing.
your faces are new. Um, it's not the first time I've been here. You're located in the city of Hutchinson. Well, or West of Hutchinson. we are. We're, we're out. If we, you know we're 61 and 50 split, mm -hmm. and the, we're just north of that, that the, the gravel road that comes in this Harem Road, we're right there. Oh, you know where okay. the Dutch kitchen is. Yes. Yeah. And then we have another, <laughs> we have another yard right in Hutchinson at uh, on, on Fifth Avenue and about uh, Hendricks. Oh, okay. It's easier for us to stage our containers there in some instances than this from our, our headquarters. Steve, you're going to have to move. This guy. Well, one of the, 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 the big thing that we like to promote about our company is that we're family and local. I realize we're not local as in Stafford County, but we're local. We're not a big, mega uh, company. And um, you can, if there's a problem, and we hope there never is, but if there's a problem, you can actually talk to an owner if you need to. And uh, so we do offer uh, a bunch of different services, as you can see. We've got the different equipment. We do t portable toilets, uh, the big um, uh, compactor containers and open top containers, uh, front load and rear load containers. And we like to say we've got the, the small town touch. We are, in fact, local. We've, we've been at this um, a good while. Um, uh, all three owners are second generation. It's uh, me and uh, two brothers that own the company. 
and um, we've grown up with trash. We we may not have uh, uh, a, uh, a business degree in in management, but we we know about trash and we know uh, what it takes to keep people happy. And so we we and we've got a lot of the services, uh, commercial containers, recycling containers. Uh, and again, more details about the open top containers, like and this, this lower um, right shows a compactor um, container where trash is thrown into the, the uh, container and stomped in. Uh, toilets, we do toilets for construction, for weddings, outdoor parties, um, you know, all kinds of stuff. We even have a um, a toilet that's on wheels that can be taken on uh, job sites, uh, backyard parties, that kind of stuff. So you can literally go anywhere. <laughs> um, so the residential, which is what uh, many people are most concerned about, is uh, uh, we generally do curbside pickup. Most often, the city bills with utilities and. Um, we have a, an agreement with, generally with each city uh, that we provide service for. And of course we do also do um, rural work. And we've done um, rural once a month service in Stafford County for a good number of years. Uh, the single stream curbside recycling, which uh, we're finding is a big push right now. I used to say, ah, recycling is a bad, it'll go away. Uh, that's not the case. It's it's here to stay. Recycling is a way of, of um, helping to care for the environment and not waste stuff that, that can be uh, reused. Of course, the commercial we have uh, recycling containers with uh, cardboard. Uh, it's a little difficult here to see, but under the part of the lid is a slot uh, where cardboard can be put in there. <laughs> How wide uh, is, is it, it open? <laughs> How wide is it open? Well, you got to manage your box to get it in there. Then, right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. <laughs> well, why is that funny? Yeah. There's more to it. It isn't funny. It isn't funny. We have these. Get his trash. We have these plastic lids on our recycle, you know, for cardboard, and okay. invariably people will throw two or three full boxes in there, you know, not broken down. It fills up the bin so no one else can drop in their cardboard because and I was asking okay. <laughs> if we had a restrictor on the lid or it only opened this far, they <laughs> had to mash the box. This <laughs> That's why our, our land the response. Is here. <laughs> okay. That's <laughs> What is it? That's why you had the office bugged, man. Yeah. <laughs> well, we also uh, we, we have we have locks on these boxes, optional, that where mm -hmm. uh, you can oh, lock the trash box up or the recycle box, either one. And you, know, you don't have people either going in there that shouldn't be or adding to the trash that shouldn't be. I forgot one thing. On the on the right we have um, uh, containers that look just like a regular trash container, and they typically don't have any restriction on them that are, are good for uh, single strings. So you can put um, uh, mixed recyclables. Mm -hmm. uh, everything can go in there in a single container, and then we uh, process them. Right now, we're taking uh, recyclables to Wichita. The picture that I'm showing you is an overhead of our facility, uh, part of it, and um, the we are we were supposed to break ground um, a week ago, but because of the wet weather, it's been delayed. And so I think within 10 days we're supposed to. But there's the approximate location uh, on the overhead um, where we expect to, to uh, uh, put up a building. And we had had an October 1st um, tentative uh, complete date, but that's been pushed back a little bit. And what we'll do there is bring in the single stream and load it into uh, semi-trailers to ship it out. There's a picture of my father and me and my two brothers. Um, 
you know, anybody can use the same um, equipment that we use, but not everybody has the same people. And that, I think, is the, is the big key. You guys are going to have to decide, is, is Nisley compatible with Stafford County? And, and that's, that's your job, is to, is to figure that out. We think we're a good fit. Um, our motto since my dad started it uh, many years ago has been, whatsoever your hand finds to do, do it with your might. And that's what we do. Um, over 55 years, I guess that's outdated, so it's 56 now. Yeah. Um, one thing hasn't changed, and that's our, equipment, our commitment to providing quality service at a reasonable price to uh, uh, customers. That really is all I have to say. Um, I know there's a lot of details we haven't talked about. Um, what I want, to, what I want to hear from you is: Is there any interest in um, further discussion? Is there, is there um, a reason we should uh, talk some more? I'd like to know more of the details. Of yeah. What, what the top costs on the contract and so forth. Okay. This uh, contract we have now is not up to February, is that right? So I don't know that there's... April? Yeah, I think it's March 31st. March 31st? Oh, yeah. Okay, March 31st. We're in any rush to do that. Sure. March 31st. Is it too early to start discussion? No. no. Okay. The more we know, the better. Okay. So, do you, once you receive this, do you ship this to someone you sell this to? Or do you have the recyclables? To, yeah. Or do you have to take it to Wichita and let somebody else take care of it? What we're doing now is we do take it to, to Wichita and they bail it and, and ship it for, mm -hmm. for the processing. Um, the new facility, um, we hope to bring recyclables in and put them in a trailer and then again they take them. We don't actually process anything. Um, the cardboard, uh, and I didn't mention this, but cardboard goes straight to uh, Sunoco. They're right here in Hutch and any cardboard that we collect goes to them. If there's cardboard in the single stream, we don't, we don't separate. Well, it, our job is not, to, is not to sort. We don't have any sort line. We don't have any of that stuff. And so, um, and it is a, uh, you asked do we sell it. It is on a, um, a sliding scale depending on what the, the market is. If the market is, is high, then we get paid a little. If the market is, is flat, then we don't get paid much. If it's down, we pay them um, for processing. So yeah, that's, right. that's the, the way that, that that works. So now I, I understand that the, the, the way the agreement is now, Stafford County pays um, a fee to have the recyclables transported to Reno, or they pay a fee for something. You pay us. Um, uh, Thirteen dollars and a quarter is what Stafford County pays to Nisley for every ton of waste that we bring into the Reno landfill. Um, I will say, from my perspective, that's an unusual arrangement. Most times, um, most times we collect all the fees from the user for collection, transportation, and disposal. We collect that from each customer. Uh, I'm not saying that it's, it's wrong, it's uh, that the county helps to subsidize, if you will, the the hauler mm -hmm. and pays for the for the tipping fee. Um, I think it would it would make sense for you to to look at 
the way that that landfill fees are um, collected from your citizens. Um, for instance, there may be some customers, some uh, residents, who choose to not have trash service, who are still paying to use the landfill. And it can be argued that that's okay. It can be argued that they shouldn't have to pay. I'm just saying I would, I would like you to, to think, um, is the way that you guys are doing it now the best for you and, and the citizens of the county? So then, how many customers would you have to have to make this profitable for you? Would we have to make it mandatory that everyone in the county uses nicely to pick up the trash? The cities? Uh, no, it would not have to be mandatory. And what, what, the way this, from my experience, the way that most counties work is that the county authorizes the hauler, either you license or do something or, or don't, and it's done both ways. Um, and then the hauler, nicely, goes to St. John or goes to Stafford City or to Maxville and says, look, this is what we have to offer. This is what it's going to cost you. Um, and then they decide, well, okay, I want to, this looks like something that um, we want or, uh, you know, it's not that big a deal. We like the guys who's, who's doing our, our trash now. Um, uh, so we, we don't want to make any changes. And so the decision is made on a city level rather than a county level. Um, this group can say, yes, Nisley is okay to haul, and yes, uh, 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 Stafford County Waste is okay to haul in Stafford County, and yes, uh, Waste Management, uh, that's, you have that right to say that Nisley can't come into, into Stafford County. Um, over 10 years ago when we first started, um, this group, this body said, it's okay. There's nothing formal, but we've been, I don't think there is. As far as I know, there's no, there's no licensing requirements. Um, I'm a little fuzzy about that. But at any rate, um, you guys have the responsibility to have reputable people providing service to your citizens. And to me, it feels like it's the, it's the city's individual responsibility to, to um, contract with, with haulers. Um, so that's from my okay. perspective. Okay. And so I would say that whether uh, Maxville or St. John or Stafford says, yeah, we want the recycling, we want the carts, we want, we want all these services that Nisley has to offer. Um, it doesn't, um, what these other cities do, uh, well, it's, it's not all or nothing mm -hmm. for, for Nisley. We, we go to each individual city and say, are we a good fit for you? And uh, we hope they say yes. Right. But, uh, okay. that, yeah. So basically, we would just have to open it up to you, Stafford County Trash Service. Any, any, we could have a formal agreement to anybody, and then the bidding is between you guys and the cities. That's the way I would see it. Now, the the thing that is is uh, unusual about the agreement that the cities have with with you, Stafford County. And the waste hauler now is that it's a three-way agreement, and part of that agreement is that Stafford County pays a flat rate. Um, the way I understand it, the transportation, yeah, the hauling fee, and um, it would 
it would be, if you want cost, then I'll need to know what is that transportation fee going to be? Or is that going to phase out? Are you going to keep doing it? Um, how is it calculated? You know. So probably, if, if you're asking for, for costs, probably what I would bring to you would be, if you don't pay any transportation fees, then these are, this is my, this is the cost to, to the cities. Um, because even our rural residents that we have now are currently being subsidized by Stafford County. And uh, whether you choose to continue that or not is completely your decision. But um, it, I guess I would have a, maybe, maybe I should say this, why don't you answer the question first? Are you going to keep doing the transportation um, subsidy? If you guys are willing to do that and have a formula of how that, how that works, um, then I can plug that into to uh, my costs. If you want to see it without a uh, subsidy, then I'd be happy to do it that way. Kind of give you a... I'd like options. I mean, yeah. I'd like to see a price how our current contract states, and I would like to see a price if, if there was no fee, no transportation. no transportation from the county on it. Am I right that the transportation is a flat fee now? Well, according to the contract, you're, you're, the current provider is getting yearly uh, $23,000 to move the non-hazardous solid waste from the uh, various cities, and he's getting another $3,900 a month to haul the non-hazardous waste left at the Stafford County you know, dump site, okay. CD landfills and dumpsters. Okay. So there's two flows of revenue. Mm -hmm. okay. So in effect, you know, we're, su we're subsidizing, we, the county, are subsidizing the cities. It's we're not just, 39 a month, that's a year. It's 39 a, uh, a year. Excuse me, 39 a year, I'm sorry. 39 a year. 3900 a year. Per, per month. Oh, yeah. But we're paying uh, 23000 plus a year for uh, the various cities, so yeah, two two hauling fees. Yeah, and to me, I would like I'd like to see you break that out. I mean, I mean, it is broken out, but it, there's two different things. One is the subsidy, if you will, for all the cities, and the other is the hauling fee for, for at the landfill. And um, am I right? I'd like to see a copy of that. Sure. Um, Public document. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Of course, the prices are key to 2004, so... Sure. Okay, so this doesn't say anything about... I was thinking that the, the copies that I had seen was a joint agreement between the cities I don't, and Stafford County. I have not seen any written agreement between the various cities and the county. Now... Nita's very good at finding stuff. Maybe she can. <laughs> but it could be that it's superseded. Well, uh, it, it, but what you have to remember, of course, is that's two, two, since 2004, we've uh -huh. had a complete change in personnel here at the courthouse. Okay. I mean, there's nobody from okay. 2004 here presently. Is this my copy? No, we can shoot you one. Okay. 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 That's fine. Thank yeah. you. I would just like to see a few options and see what this fits. I mean, and what do you want to see? Just options. Okay. Options, you know, like we, like I just discussed. I mean, options as it sits, <clears throat> as the contract sits now, and options if we phase out the transportation costs, what it would cost the local tax, local citizens, and what our options are for the future. I mean, the, 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 the single stream recycling or curbside recycling, or other options that you might foresee. Do you have any specifics in recycling that you'd like to see? I'm not a recycling expert. Well, <laughs> I, 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 I feel that the, the 
county does a pretty good job in recycling. Okay. I, I know, and Darren has attested to this, that Stafford does a very good job in glass, tin, cardboard. Uh, St. John does a very good job because they have a facility down there where the people can just drive down there and put them in. You know, they put the appropriate thing in the appropriate box. <laughs> Everything's no, great, but, and uh, and we do uh, sell the cardboard. We do make a little bit of money every year on cardboard. Not much on glass or or, or cans and newspapers. I think they maybe a little break even on that. Is you know, paying for the transportation charges to to get the newspaper down to uh, Harper. Yeah. Um, we have a source up at Great Bend. Unfortunately, they're so far behind that um, you know, they can't take anything. It was Sunflower, correct? And um, and then we were told that you know if the cardboard is put in with the other, like in single stream, and it's contaminated, you know, glass and you know, is embedded in it. And, the buyer won't buy the cardboard. So it's bailed up and whatever happens to it from then on, I have no idea. But I am in favor of recycling. And, uh, well, uh, I don't disagree that uh, citizens in your county are doing a good job. Um, I, I was at a recycle conference in uh, Dodge City last summer <coughs> where the uh, uh, one of the speakers said, it's the rule of 10-80-10. I said, what do you mean by that? He said, well, 10% of the people will recycle no matter how difficult it is. 80% of the people will recycle if you make it easy. And 10% of the people won't recycle whether it's easier or hard. And uh, that's a little what we've seen in cities where we've, we've implemented the, the single stream recycling. Um, when you make it easy for the for the customer for the, the citizen to, to recycle, participation goes up. It's that simple. And uh, the the single stream recycling picked up at the curb is very simple. And so I will. Uh, when do you when do you need an answer? How soon are you? You said this isn't on your front burner, whatever. Okay, according to the minutes from 2004, Welch met with each city individually to renew their contracts. So I won't probably have the copies of those contracts with the cities. I do. You do? Yeah. I okay, well, I... I don't know if they're current or... Yeah, I I, no I'm idea. pretty sure they're current. But he evidently deals with them directly. It doesn't come Okay. And the recital in here is that so, uh, Welch is already providing non hazardous solid waste pickup for various cities and staff. Right. Okay. So he deals directly with them. Okay. Well, well see. Does he build the cities or the end users? The cities. The city, I know when I look at the city the, bill here, the city bill. City bills each, yeah. the residents. Each oh, resident. Yeah. For yeah, their so. the trash it's mandatory. Yeah, so, yeah, it is. Well, can you see from my perspective? But I, like I don't. I can't tell you from Maxwell or Stafford how they do theirs. Stafford's on the utility bill. If I was your uh, trash collector, and I could divert um, waste from the landfill to the uh, recycle facility, and I'm getting a flat rate for hauling the materials, um, it's to my advantage to divert as much as I can to the recycle facility. Um, so I'm, I'm a little bit curious, Is do you see the, um, do you see tying it to tons uh, if you keep subsidizing it, or will you stay a flat fee? I don't know how they calculated the, the number to begin with. I mean, I haven't researched it that far to know if, if it was based off miles or tons or 
or how they arrived at the number they arrived at. Okay. I think it's based on the kinds. And it was probably a, a guesstimate at that, at that point in time. Okay. I'll put some ideas together for you, too. Okay. I will say, I, I think yeah. we have multiple options, and I, you know, I would ultimately like to dissect so, each one of them. Which you're stuff. talking about, one cart or two carts? Well, we do it, um, we have different programs in different cities. What we um, now are you talking about recycling or are you talking about curb? Well, there'd, there'd be two carts. There'd be one trash and one recycling. Right. Uh, this doesn't have it. Um, the tan one is for recycling. Right. The tan cart is and for recycling. The green one is for and we've trash. got different programs. In some areas, yeah. In some areas, we provide one recycle cart. There's, there's a picture kind of right there, two carts side by side. Oh, okay. A green one and a, and a tan. Okay. And take Medicine Lodge, for instance. There, you get one recycle cart. It's picked up every other week. In some areas, we have, uh, you can have two recycle carts, but it's only picked up once a month. So it, it we're we're transitioning towards uh, the uh, one cart pickup <coughs> every other week, but uh, you might still find some literature that says you can have two carts and uh, pick it up once a month. So the trend is across the country to go with recycle pickup every other week. And in fact, in some places they're even doing trash every other week because they've seen the volume go down. Not everybody likes that idea. That's the, I wouldn't say that's a trend. The trend is to go to single screen every day. Any other questions or comments? We can, we can model it after some place that it's worked well, too. I mean, and you, you have more yeah. expertise in that area. So. Both work well. Customers like uh, more frequent collection of recyclables, uh, especially those who are avid recyclers. I'm sorry. Now that was more than 10 minutes long. <laughs> <laughs> you got part of the problem. Yes. <laughs> Good questions. Well, um, we will get um, working on this and, and come back with some options for you. Um, maybe first of November or something. Thank you very good. Very Thanks for your time. Yeah, thank you. We don't have service out of my way. Yeah, yeah. Sure. we use them. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. One is right, one is wrong. I use Shamrock Sanitation. I have a great example. The real problem of buying brands for free, but they sell them basically in county. Kind of like here, so we kind of make very close to them out. Who is that? Lincoln County, up north central Kansas. They have a transfer station where they sort everything out. Then they contract with people to come haul off the good stuff in the basket. That's interesting. That's what they're doing and uh, in Ellsworth County, it's pretty much every city for itself. You know, some trash goes to the Barton County landfill, some goes to the Sling County landfill. I assume you're the legal counsel. Yeah. Marvin Nisley. Joe Sheepak. Joe Sheepak. Sheepak, okay. So, and uh, like I say, every county has this a different thing. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Thank you, Joe. Thank you for your time. Yeah. Okay, we will recess and reconvene up at the uh, open this up for just a, uh, a minute or two. Uh, I want to make a couple of comments first. Um, as like last week, I expect you to be courteous and polite. Uh, the other thing is, I thought, I thought. Last week, we wiped the slate clean, and we were going to move forward. That was my understanding. Correct? Yes. Okay. So, Steve, uh, you're on the agenda.
there's been a lot of rumors flying around Stafford County. A famous person once said, a lie gets halfway around the world before the truth has a chance to get its pants on. Therefore, since I've been the main focus of this story, it only seemed right that I should tell the story as well as I know it. So here we go. The roller coaster ride. With your permission, I'm going to say it again. The roller coaster ride. A person's life is somewhat like a roller coaster ride. Some people's ride is way too short, while others Others are blessed with a real long ride. Some people's ride has sharp ups and downs, while others resemble a child's roller coaster, flat with an occasional small variation. A career is the same. The past couple weeks of my career, my life, has been one with ups and downs of world record level. My partner in life, Rosie, has experienced it too. As you recall, we were sitting in the same courtroom one week ago. A number of people took the time out of their busy lives not to not just come to this courtroom. They came to this courtroom and told stories. Stories about me, stories that touched my heart, like you'll never know. Never in my wildest dreams did I think that I would be dealing with what I've dealt with after such a wonderful Stafford County experience up to this point. During the commission meeting weeks ago, without me present, the commissioner made a motion to terminate me and appoint my assistant. My, when my assistant came down from the chambers, he told me of what had transpired. I immediately went back up to the chambers and asked for an executive session. During that session, I know I'm breaking etiquette by speaking about that business, but frankly, the people deserve to hear the story. During that session, I explained with a bit of fury, I'm sure, that all they had to do was ask me to resign. I would have given it to any of them. Every man, woman, and child on this planet deserves to be treated with respect. The ill-advised, ill-worded motion attacked my integrity. I have spent over three decades building that integrity. On the ride back to the station, I explained to my assistant how this looked. I explained that the inclusion of him with the motion had all appearance of being choreographed. I told him it was likely that others would immediately see it that way too. Frankly, the motion was a strike through the heart of us both. Moving forward, as you recall, last Wednesday I gave my resignation to the commissioner. I made that decision because it simply didn't look like the dislike for me could be quelled. After being called into two consecutive executive sessions, I believe there was some, some hope, as long as my wife had the energy to. I told the commissioners that I would try. I told you citizens that same thing. I based my decision to try on the words of a wise man named Leon Dunn. Leon gave an inspiring speech last week about what we needed to do to get past this. <laughs> Primarily that we needed to put our petty differences behind. The commissioner said they too could follow Leon's words. I had hope, but I'm I'm no Pollyanna. I knew we weren't likely to be sitting around a campfire singing Kumbaya soon. I knew my time as a Stafford County Emergency Service Director would probably need to be short. As I said last week, I only have control over my thoughts, my actions. I cannot change how others think of me, nor do I have control over their actions. My hope that I could precisely but succinctly transition to Stafford County Emergency Services to a best designed life without me. I envision my role as somewhat of an organizational design consultant. I immediately scheduled meetings for both my fire station chiefs and my EMS crew captains. The day was Thursday. I had scheduled a fire station chief's meeting for 7 p.m. It was mid-afternoon when my assistant, Misty Blakesley, received a phone call from firefighter EMT Brenda Gravis. 
I was sitting at my desk in the same room at the time. Brenda asked Misty if she could come by the station shortly after 5 p.m. when she got off work to visit with Misty and me about a plan that she had. Misty put Brenda on hold and told me what Brenda wanted. I thought I could plug this meeting in right before the fire station chiefs, so I told Misty that as long as she could stay over, that she could tell Brenda, yes, we could visit with her. Brenda arrived shortly after 5 p.m. She first told us that she could help with the medical building. We explained that everything was caught up and the hospital was doing very well with the part they absorbed. Then she stammered into the second thing. I would like to ask Brenda to come forward now to tell you in her own words what she told me last Thursday. So yeah, we ended on a good note. Like I said, it was 
for the most part, positive. But that part in the back of my mind about just forget everything that happened. Yes, like Leon said, and like I told you, if we could just do what Leon says and just move forward, go forward, forget the past. As long as the new things don't come up, that was all new information. That was in the meeting minutes from a week before. No. Right? No. I found out about it after the meeting was over last week. Wednesday night. But that was from something that happened previously. Okay. Um, and just one more quick thing. Um, my plan was to go down. If Steve said that, great. You know, bring it up at the meeting. You know, that's the plan Steve was talking about. Fess up about that. Get the billing straightened out. That way, they have nothing to complain about. We could honestly go forward with a plan. That was my plan. I didn't completely intend on telling Steve. But I wasn't about, when he asked me what was said, I wasn't about to stab him in the back. I know I've made enemies doing it, but I'd rather be an honest enemy than a backstabbing friend. Do you remember me asking you, Brenda, what you would do if you, if you were in my position? I said, I don't know. It'd be a tough decision. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. What was my reaction? Well, you can just imagine. Most of you, emergency responders, know me. I explained to Brenda in very animated fashion that this was proof, just like the reason for me offering up my resignation at last com commissioner's meeting, that the commissioners simply couldn't quell their dislike for me. They said they could follow Leon Dunn's advice. They didn't. I called Commissioner Chairman Clayton Grimmett and asked him to contact Commissioner Fairchild and have him meet me at the MS office first thing in the morning. I invited my wife to this meeting since this has affected her practically as much as it has me. I also asked my assistant, Misty Blakesley, to sit in on the meeting since she was present when Brenda visited with us. The meeting. I first told Commissioner Fairchild the reason I brought my wife. I then told Commissioner Fairchild that Brenda Gravis had come by and met with Misty and me last night. I explained that Brenda had first offered to help us with the EMS billing. I then told Commissioner Fairchild that what Brenda told me next was the reason for my request to visit with him. I told Commissioner Fairchild that what she told me so incensed me that my memory of the moment was still cloudy. And that was the reason for inviting to this meeting my assistant, Misty, to repeat what was told to us by Brenda. Commissioner Fairchild refuted the story told by Brenda. The purpose of telling this story was not to embarrass Commissioner Fairchild, but I wasn't the one who visited with Brenda. The purpose of telling this story today wasn't to embarrass Commissioner Steinmetz for what, for making a poorly worded motion. I was probably responsible, I'm sure, for the hatred in his soul when, he, when I had an outburst of frustration earlier in the year. The purpose of telling the story wasn't to shine a bad light on my assistant, who had an Alexander Haig type reaction to his almost promotion. The purpose of telling the story was to inform the public. The purpose of telling this story was to share a story of how a situation can whirl out of control, like a Kansas tornado, destroying lives in its wake. I apologize to the commissioner. I apologize to the fellow responders, and most importantly, I apologize to the citizen. I've been doing this long enough, I should have seen this coming, and took steps to avert the catastrophe.
At this time, I, would, I will turn the floor back over to Chairman Griffin, but after others are given a chance to speak, I would like to have the floor one last time. I just have a few questions to ask. Um, first off, uh, Mr. Fairchild, did you go to Hudson and talk to Brenda? Yes, okay. and, I, and Steve knows that. I never, your newspaper article was wrong. I never denied talking to Brenda. Okay. Well, you didn't call me back. So I really last week, that. last week, Steve asked us, if you remember, at the end of his statement to go talk to the EMTs. To get the fire. I remember him saying that you guys didn't talk to And everything that I talked to. Everything, no, I, talk, wait, wait, everything wait. I talked to Brenda about was new information that was occurred after last meeting. Okay. I don't really remember him asking you to go talk to the EMT. I can That's show you the transcript of it. I can listen to the audio. I'd rather go by that. But I do remember him saying that you guys didn't talk to the EMTs or anybody else when you made the decision that he was a poor manager. But that's, that's fine. Um, what I'd like to ask you, though, is what authority did you used to go talk to Brenda. I mean, after your county commission. I was fulfilling Steve's wishes to talk to the EMTs. It's not my job to stick my head in the sand and be misinformed on new information. Okay, but after your meetings are you really don't have any county commission authority. I mean, once the meetings are out here, you don't have any authority. So I'm just supposed to stick my head no, in the sand on new information? No, but the fact that you're county commissioner, you really don't have any authority to be talking to people. Another question I have is if you have a county, but well, you can laugh on but if you have a county employee that's going to other departments and talking to employees of the other departments behind their back, trying to stir up trouble and discontent, would you not fire that employee? No. no? It happens all the time. Well, okay, but you can fire somebody over a billing mistake. Okay. One other question is, how did Shane let you know that Doyle had called him and told him that that was? The Maxville resident, not Shane, told me about it. Anyone else?
week, as of last Wednesday, we were to drop this and move forward, please. Thank you. Jerry? Three minutes. Four years old? Three. Uh, I'm Jerry Steinman. I was here last week. I'm here again. I'm asking you guys, you councilmen, or commissioners, do you know what micromanagement means? Do you know what the word is? Do you know how it is incorporated into life? One of you shake your head. I know what it is. Yeah, I, I know what it is. Okay. I believe this is a lot of micromanagement. Okay. And that is, if a person has to say, make it explicit, I'm going to do this, or we're going to do this, and be held to the to the uh, exact T of this thing. We've got to dot the I's and cross the T's. Come on, guys. That is micromanagement. You hired him as the superintendent. He has people underneath him to work. Okay? If he seems it necessary to take and have one of these people do a job for him, he is expecting that person to do the job. And if he comes back and tells you, we did it. Okay, that doesn't mean to say he did it himself. We did it. He has an employee that followed his instructions. Did it. But when you say, okay, he said, I said, or I was going to do this, or we, and that didn't mean he didn't do it. That is micromanagement. I worked for a guy years ago for the Postal Service. It was nothing but a micromanagement. Buddy, let me tell you, I've seen it again. And it ain't good. That kind of stuff is childish, ridiculous. Are you guys afraid? That Steve is going to take your place. That's really what a micromanager does. He's afraid that somebody is going to take your place. Well, if you are, if you're scared, I'm going to run for county commissioner. So, if you're going to be scared, I'm going to tell you right now, you better start being scared. Go for it. No, you're right on the button. You'll be running against the wrong commission. Steve. Leon. Well, I'm going to cut to the chase, folks. I'm very disappointed in our commissioners because when they came out of the meeting last week, I'm sure the acoustics in this room was the sense that you maybe didn't hear. But I said, can you commissioners live by this decision and whatever was talked about in the executive commission and move forward? And all three of them said yes. When the meeting was over, I shook each one's hand and I said, you now will go forward. And they said yes. You know, that really disappoints me. I thought we had responsible people sitting in leadership chairs that knew how to make right decisions. Commissioner Fairchild came to my farm last week and I appreciated it very much. In my mind, Kurt was trying to be a missionary to smooth the water and I thank you for that, Kurt. And he showed me the minutes also. And I guess, Mr. Grimmett, Mr. County Attorney, I would like to know, did you correct those minutes this morning in your earlier meeting to read as they were quoted on the video? The person in charge of the minutes is the county clerk, Nita Keenan. She's in charge of the minutes of recording it, but you all approved it. I don't approve minutes, sir. The commissioners did. If they got themselves in the jam, Mr. Attorney, you can probably help them out, and those minutes need to be corrected. And there is a way of doing it. I'm not a, a great orator of Robert's Rules of Order, and I think you need to find that way to correct those minutes and 
that needs to be done. And I guess I'm going to say that what really disappoints me, as near as I can tell, there have been three wrongs. And as I called Commissioner Fairchild back and said, you'll never make wrongs right if you don't clean the slate. And gentlemen, don't let your egos, don't let your personal pride, don't let your emotions outrun your intellectual ability to make good, solid, sound decisions. And I guess in my mind, this is all petty. It should never happen. It takes an awful lot of character for people to stand up and say, hey, you know, I'm sorry. I had bad advice. I made a wrong decision. Will you please forgive me? And with your help, let's go forward, correct the wrong, and not have reached the ground. And I've got to tell you that Steve Moody, in his makeup, has woven together the moral fibers to give him character to stand before you commissioners in this audience and say, I'm sorry, I love you. It's a real man to be able to do that. And I hope you commissioners will do that. And if this thing can't go forward, I would suggest you resign. If it can go forward, and it should, I'm going to offer you another piece of advice. And I imagine it'll be like last week. It'll be like pouring water on the duck's back, and it'll all run off. But if you so elect to get rid of Steve Moody, I think you ought to do it in a graceful manner. I think you ought to give him months, two months, three months to train whoever you select to come this way because this is like a track meet relay race. We don't want to drop the baton. We don't want to stumble and fall down. I think you all, or at least a couple of you, have brought disgrace to your own personal life, maybe your business, maybe your family, and I wish you would be man enough to say, let's go forward. Any of you don't like what I said, I'm Leon Dunn, I'm an agriculture producer. I'll be happy to talk to any commissioner, any of you in the audience. I will not do it over the phone. If you don't have my email address, I'm not hiding behind email. I want an eyeball by eyeball. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Leon.
but I, 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 I just don't think they can. So with that, I respectfully submit my immediate resignation. Steve, I'm sorry. Uh, as I said, I thought we'd resolved all this last week. Uh, we have a lot of people that like you, including myself. I don't want you to resign. I would like for you to stay on. But if you feel it is that if it's necessary, you know. For your, it's your life. You know, I, I, I don't know that you listened to my words last week. That I, I, it's, it's not about me. It truly is not about me. I hope, because I, I, I make a grandiose speech, you think it's about me, but it's not about me. It's about these people. They, you know, I guide them every day, every minute in emergencies, and I make a lot of tough decisions that are with them in mind. And I know I'm going to get criticized. I know they're going to they're going to run to you and be upset often. And you know, the memorial funds. You you didn't come to me and ask me. I could have explained it. The uh, this come to me, me. Let me explain it first. Don't talk to other people. Talk to me. I can explain it. At, at least give me the opportunity. And maybe I'm. Sometimes you'll find that I'm. I indeed was wrong. But in your frenzy to find me wrong, you didn't even afford me the opportunity to. And I, you know, I, I, I know it's difficult. I, I, I couldn't probably sit there in your seat and accept my resignation either. Last week nor this week. I understand you got a, uh, an upset crowd. And I, you know, I, I, I wish I could say, but I, I just can't manage the emergency responders. I, I made several decisions over the weekend that I was pretty sure probably was going to hear something. They were upset. I made the decisions based off of paging out fire crews in two locations and EMS responders in one for something that was not emerging at 2.30 in the morning. I'm not going to do that to my emergency responders. But I have to have somebody that has my back. I can't expect And, and I can't quit making those decisions. But but wears on me if I think that I'm constantly going to get called. I you know I, I I just don't feel like you listen to Leon Dunn's words for for whatever reason. I I I wish we could. I wish I wish I could go back to the very beginning. when I had a field command outburst in the commission meeting. I wish Shane would have lambasted me right there before I panicked and went into executive mode and apologized there instead, which was not right. Needed to be out in the open. I, I, I wish a lot of things. But I just... I, 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 well, what I'm saying is that the people of the county, the EMS, the fire department, need your leadership. 
That's what I'm basing this on. So. But I need your support. support. I, I can't, and that's what I said last week, I can't lead them without your support. You have my support. I need three people to support. Oh, we gave them your support last week. The ball was in the court. Come on, come on, Kurt. You know, when you found that out, come to me and let me tell you. You're not listening to me, Kurt. Come to me. You need you need talk. No, I'm talking. We talked about that. Listen, I'm talking. Listen, please. Come to me. I am the only one. I could have stopped it right there, immediately. And we could have resolved it immediately. Don't go talk to my firefighter. What in the world did you think? I love these people. They love me. They're not going to not come back and talk to me. Because I would never do that to them. And they know that. I'm willing to support you, Steve. I think there's nobody that doesn't think you're a great paramedic and a great firefighter director. I'm willing to support you just like last week. But I can I cannot promise people that if somebody comes in and asks me a question that I'm not going to check it out. I now come to me. I, me. I, would, I would come to you and if somebody told me something to about you, I would come to you first. I, I, not ten twenty five hundred. I, I, you had enough on your plate last week. Let me read my first quote, oh, sentence no. again, because I, I think I need to. A famous person once said, a lie gets halfway around the world before the truth has a chance to get its pants on. Steve, did that you, was Winston Churchill. I didn't want to bother you with that issue. <laughs> you, were, <laughs> you, you had a lot you of things I wanted to go, You guys got to go, man. You got to step down. That's all there is to it. You, you've demonstrated that you don't care about feeling up in front. You've talked, you, I've heard, I've seen both you two guys discussing county business when the meetings were adjourned. That's a violation of the Kansas Open Meeting Act. I'm going to have to talk to Sheet about that let's, later. Let's, let's so stop. You guys stop. have got to just stop. Let's stop. Let's stop. I'm just explaining. I've been, I've been in upper level administration. On, please. Please. Let me explain something. I, you know, I'm not some stupid fire chief or Fart. I am a fart, but I'm not some stupid fire chief. I'm an executive fire officer graduate from the National Fire Academy. A small percentage of fire chiefs in the nation attain that status. I know what I'm doing. If you would lean towards me, I would help. I would always help Stafford County, and I will for the rest of my life. I'm only a phone call away. But no offense, gentlemen, but the emergency service is not the same as your business. It's it's extremely different. My father-in-law is in the the rental business. Residential. He thought he just knew so much he would get into the commercial residential or commercial rental business. He lost his shirt. They were entirely different. You you don't you don't realize and you don't respect that I know what I'm doing in emergency service. I've managed a hundred people in Salina. As a deputy chief, 56 people, all, you know, in Leavenworth, I know what I'm doing. I know how to lead people. I know how to get things done. Three, the past commission, if you look, at, we were a team. We got, we got more done than I've done in my whole career here in Stafford County. It's because we got great musicians, folks. We got these responders are your musicians. Brenda came up to me after last meeting and said, you took us from the Flintstones to the Jetsons. And I said, you were always Jetsons. Always Jetsons. You just needed a director to direct the music. You had the music in you. But I just don't think, I, I don't think you guys, I, I think you'd like to, and you'd like to say that, but I just, I think there's so many pains that have been inflicted that I, I just don't think you really can consider me a teacher. I, I wish you could. I, I truly wish you could. Are you willing to stay on for a little while? Three in time? I, I, I just don't know. Yeah. Let me make a comment. 
If I may, Mr. Chairman. Yes. You know, I don't know Steve very well, but I can tell that he is a strong-willed person. That's part of the fiber that makes him who he is. And when you sit in the chair that he sits in that determines life and property damage, you've got to be strong-willed. Most of us have not been in the military to really understand that the military is a lot easier now than it used to be. But there is a process. There is a way to resolve this. And if you got to eat crow, if you got to back up, you know the seeds of the solution are in every problem if you'll just look. And I think that Steve Moody needs to be given the vote of confidence that we want him. If you commissioners have some things that he needs to correct, make it in written form, in an open dialogue in your executive session and say, Steve, we've got these three things. Will you please address them? And we'll give you 30 days to give us an answer. This thing doesn't have to come to a shotgun ending. Let's fix it. It's fixable. If you got to back up and say, I'm sorry, what's wrong with that? Good heavens, it's like we got two smokestacks. One of them's blowing black smoke and one of them's blowing white. And the whole thing is gray. Let's make it all white. And Mr. Grimmett, if this comes to the ending that appears to be coming, I don't know what you can do as chairman of the board to restore the trust and the respect and the idea that commissioners can make responsible decisions if this thing ends on this note. And I challenge you all three to solve it and stop it. Steve, I hope you would stay on. We're talking about life. We're talking about property. In case of a fire or an emergency, and without those two, Stafford County won't amount to hill of beans. And we've already brought enough distrust and disgrace to the county. Now let's fix it. So what do you think? I have no problems. I, as I stated before, I, I give Steve 100% support. These these things that have happened in the past shouldn't have happened. Maybe it was my fault. I apologize if it is my fault. The billing. Uh, I keep hearing hospital billing. Folks, the hospital billing has been taken care of. The backlog is taken care of. From, from Julie Byer, who's, who's in charge of the medical billing, there is nothing dif more difficult than medical billing as compared to a chemical parts or whatever. You send the statement out, you know exactly what you're going to get charged for, you pay the bill. When it comes to medical billing, you don't know. It'll be 180 days. It may be six months. And if you all have been, in, in, have been involved with insurance, you know how that is. We can't give a straight balance sheet from EMS or even the hospital. The hospital doesn't know where they made any money until they get the year-end report. You've been in business for 12 months. You don't know if you made any money until the end of the, until the final audit. It's the same thing with the EMS. So I'm tired of hearing about this EMS billing. It's being taken care of. Sometime next month, the hospital is going to be launching the bill. EMS service will give the hospital the run report. It'll be coded, and the bill will be launched. The backlog is taken care of. We've had this mess for for years. It's being taken care of. I, for one, do not want Steve Moody to leave. I want you to hear that. I am with him 100%. I have been down that road. If you want a little course in history that you don't know about me, I was a, a corpsman in the Navy. I went through field medicine. I went through fire control. I worked five years in a, in a county hospital, 145-bed county hospital, worked in the emergency room and worked surgery. 
I know what it's like when that bell goes off or that siren goes off. You get that knot in your stomach but you do not know what's coming through that door. It could be a splinter or it could be an amputation or it could be a DOA. You're never, and I, I applaud the EMS people because you never know when you get that page what's going to be there. We have a great, great volunteer force. And I've said before, I rank them among anyone else in the state. So I don't want to be taken wrong that I do not support of the EMS director. I am in support of the fire department. I am in support of emergency preparedness. The hospital is trained now. They're more trained for emergency preparedness than they have been in, in I don't know how many years. Because of Steve. I don't know what else I can say. I, I'm tired. I thought this was taken care of last week. I went to sleep clean like I promised Leon last week I would, and I still have. I mean, I, I have been notified by, by Doyle Wilson, and Doyle, you know, I, I talked to Doyle about that, I said, you know, I gave everybody my word that we wiped the slate clean. That's where I'm leaving it. That's where I've left it. I support Steve and his people and everything they do. The problems that I've had with him, as I discussed last week, are management issues accounts receivables, being professional to us as a board. I mean, whether he, it, obviously you guys are upset. We're here for three, three and a half more years, you know, and I, I've wiped the slate clean like I told you people I would, and I give him my utmost support. And that's where I'm leaving. Thank you. You're welcome. And I'm like Clay. I'm tired of revisiting this issue. I mean, we gave you our word last week. That's where I want to leave it. Now, if he chooses to resign, that's a total different matter we have to deal with. But as of last week, as of right now, he has my utmost support. Now, if he chooses to leave, that's his choice. That's where we left it at the end of last week. That's where I'm going to leave it today. Now, if he wants to resign, then we'll handle it. But that's that's my say. I'm 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 like Clay. I'm tired of I'm to the point of being tired of this issue. Do I owe him an apology? No. Does he owe me an apology? No. We wiped it clean. What's Mr. Fairchild have to say about it since he was the one that I'm willing to wipe the slate clean, and if any new information comes out, I will stick my head in the sand. Be be uh, no, I'll stick my head in the sand. Don't stick your head in the sand. Go to sleep. What? Don't stick your head in the sand. Go to sleep. From now on, I will go to sleep. Steve, and in hindsight, I wish I would have went to Steve, but after the issues we had last week, Brenda, you know that I couldn't go to Steve. He had a lot to think about last week. Yeah. It wasn't you good really need to resign. For, right. That's all there is to it. You tried to blindside the, the guy. I mean, you said right there that you were one to not let him know about him ahead of time and blindside him. You brought the issue up the day after you got to I would like, I would like the opportunity to go into an executive session with myself and my wife and the council. How long? We can always come. We can always no, come. No, I'm, I'm, I'm here. That's why I just, it's, he wants us to make a motion. You have to say a certain time. I have time to have a time limit. Yeah. yeah. I make a motion to go. like that? How many minutes? Yeah, you got to give it time. You have yeah, to we have it. I'm not saying that. Oh, I understand. understand. I make a motion to go in executive session for 30 minutes with Steve Moody and his wife for non discussion of personnel matters and non elected personnel. Second. Yes. There's a lot of tension. Alright, Jerry, what time? Uh, 10 till. Uh, 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 uh,